Hi all and welcome at this week's bait demo and uh, make sure you get your hands on the freshest possible Natal salts by far the best baits from sharks right down to any fish you're going to target except uh, of course bronze bream you'll still catch on prawn your little rockfish but in most cases this will be your best bait now today I'm just going to show you a nice little neat fillet bait when you get Natal sods fresh and they, they blast frozen you'll see the skin is much tougher then you can fish fillet baits with the skin showing to the outside but in general I like making my fillet baits inside out they make very neat fillet baits and uh, with that smell and dirty water in clean water they stay neat but the smell just comes out better with sardines they've got a lot of oil that's the smell they've got a lot of blood but only really in this area and along the backbone you'll see it when we when we cut them as we go along with bait, bait demo so that's part of what you want in there a lot of times when you're building big raggy baits and you're using sardine fillets you'll mush the backbone into the meat as well it's just extra blood but a lot of oil in this okay so what i'm going to do first i'm going to use a, a 6 o trace this is a nice little bait for for most fish for cob nice little sardine bait uh, but first things first, I want to put a bit of foam on my hook. Well, this should be fine. And that's where I use... That's where I use the toothpick. And I work that through as far as what I possibly can. And then I'm just going to clip it off like that. Right. Now that's where you're going to fit your foam in. I'll make this a little bit shorter. Now look where I put that. Just at the start of the turn is where you want it. We're going to make the bait so that your hook is nice and proud and you actually hook the fish. You don't miss them. And this I'll tie with my bait cotton. And I'll mention this every time because there's some guys that haven't watched the previous. Is the for for bait, best bait presentations, you use the latex cotton, and you get it in thin, medium, and thick. And that depends on the bait you want to tie. For your really small finesse bait, you're going to use the thin. For your medium edible and most of your baits, the medium. And for your shark, your big mushy shark baits, you can go to the to the thick if you want. I use the medium and the light for or thin for everything really. Okay. Foam on the hook. And why do we always tie foam? It's not just for flotation. Yes, it helps for movement to get your bait up, but it creates the body for a neat bait. If you just try and mush that or take a mushy fleshy meaty bait and try and put it on your hook and your line it's not going to come as neat it will be a lot more difficult you want something to create the body for to to build on and that's when and then it makes it really easy it's very simple okay now sardine we normally cut in pieces like that with sardine the head's useless okay the the gills and the blood and the heart all sits here you don't really use the heads unless you want to build bigger bulky baits which we'll show you as well you see there in the head this little section here is where the gills the blood and the stuff sits in here if i cut it out a bit further you'll see the heart sitting there now there's the other cut okay for this particular bait we'll use that later for some other baits Okay, and it's as simple as that. Now cutting this, cut it right next to the backbone in a fillet. This side the same. I'm gonna take the backbone out and I fold it neatly open, like so. Don't mark on so. So that's your cutters. Then, still frozen, important to shape your bait. Let it be frozen. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting just a slit two thirds down. I'm not cutting right through. I just want this to be able to fold. Hook proud, which means the body of your bait sits on the back. You fold this on, hold it with your hand. The heat of your hand will mold this. You start working your cotton. And as I mentioned before, you use your hand, the heat of your hand, to slowly defrost the outside, and that will shape your bait. And you just use the cotton to keep that shape intact. Use your fingers, bait slippy, slippery. <laughs> so you find eventually ways of doing this right. You can hold it in your finger, you'll see my traces under tension, and that's how I get it to go all the way to the last bit here to make sure that it's tight as well. And I just finish it off with three turns, take it underneath. And guys, there's a neat, very neat little sardine bait. Now after you finish those, well you can rub it a bit. That will hide the cotton even more. So when it hits the water, you've got that flesh immediately creating a bit of an oil glow around your bait and just makes it look even more appetizing. I love the smell of this. Okay, now once you've got your bait like this, all right, and you decide, look, I wanna go bigger, that's not big enough for me, that's when you start doing what we refer to as cutlets. Now see, in these you'll have a bit of backbone, which then makes very, very nice little add-ons, which you'll start using to build this bait. Place it where you want it. And then the shaping starts by using your hand. Start molding this into your bait is part of okay and there you've got a nice fleshy sardine bait you can mold it and mold it until it really gets to the neat shape you want it already starting to sign for some nice blood. Now this is the best part, your belly part, okay? And what we do, especially in the Eastern Cape, this is such a nice little bait that you'll stick on the back of this, if you want, there's still a, the bone in the front, just want that out. Open it up nicely and now we can really make this a neat little bloody bait. Lots of blood is added onto that. And remember to keep your, your bait in ratio with your hook. I'm just showing you guys how to bulk up. But this is still fine the size wise for the hook I'm using. And just continue using the cotton and your hand. Now you see you've got all those intestines there. And you start shaping this nicely. The idea is you want it fairly aerodynamic. So you want almost a teardrop shape. Guys, now why I bolt up on the one side is what I always talk about when you clip your sinker for distance. Now it will balance out. You see your bait is weighted to the one side. So you'll hang your sinker on this side to kind of balance it because it's just off center your sinker when you hang it. 
and laying on the side so that will balance it nicely but look at that from a bloody bait point of view no fish will resist that nice bloody bait and guys that brings me to the end of our little mushy bloody bait we also call this a kind of a rugby ball bait you can build these in the size or the shape of a rugby ball this is more the teardrop one on the hook when we're using the dangles we actually tie it so it looks like a little baby rugby ball and you hang it underneath your hook and today i'm going to show you one of my favorite baits for grunter using sardine it's a nice little strip bait very neat and most other species of fish won't leave it alone but specifically targeting grunter now very simple we've got to trace now before we start with the sardine just want to get my piece of foam remember in every video um, I mentioned to you guys the foam we use to create the body that's how you get neat baits Now this, your foam you can shape until you're happy with uh, how you've shaped it. And then with a knife, doesn't always get exactly like you want it. So I'll neaten it up with the scissors and I'll just turn the edges a bit for bait, a better bait presentation. Because this forms the body of your bait. Now this and the transcar will work as well for the for the cob is what it does for the grunter. The cob won't swim past this. Okay. Okay, a long, nice little thin, slightly thicker at the bottom, and that's gonna form the base of my bait. Take the foam till where the hook starts turning. And then remember to push a toothpick in to lock it as deep as what you possibly can and then just clipping it off. Okay and that now we'll just uh, tie with a cotton. Get that part sorted out of the way. Now a lot of times you must kind of bend it backwards because it will cool up like that. So that's where you use your, your other hand, left hand in my case, to kind of keep it straight. There's a lot of, lot of uh, anglers, especially if you only got a couple of weeks or opportunities a year to go fish, will think, you know what, You're wasting so much time, I just rather want to get a bait in the water. That's all good if there's a smash, then you're not too worried about bait presentation or um, offering something different to the fish out there to get the bite but remember most of the guys there especially if it's a spot with a couple of anglers are throwing very or could be throwing very ordinary and plain baits so so this might just get you the fish under all the guys and even on your own this will get you better results by spending some time in making neat presentable baits Okay. This is this sardine's got quite big scales. Still nice and solidly frozen. Basically what I'm doing is I'm cutting the fillet off the side. And that's the part I want to be using. And the belly skin we just cut off. A very, very simple. Just not all the way through. Those are the slits I make, just to be able to fold this nicely. Okay. 
Okay, now what this allows, it allows it to fold open like that. This one can go deeper. Then what I do is I'll stick my hook through the bottom where I want it, all the way to the top, and fold all of this piece by piece to the back. Get my cotton. And remember, the other hand, you use the heat of your hand and you press down on the meat to shape it. Now this particular bait you can make thicker, you can make thinner. You need to defrost properly to now get that long, nice, thin look to clear it around the hook. Make sure the hook's proud. And then by using your hands, you'll just shape it like you want it. So I get a bit more on the top here. And there you have it. Nice long thin. But ideal to put out for grunter. You can make it smaller, thinner, you can make it thicker. If you're not fishing for grunter, you can add another piece just by cutting the half of the other fillet and putting it on the back. If you want to build this and you want to build it bigger, you'll be doing it on the back of the sardi or of this bait. You won't be doing it on the front because then you'll close up the hook and it won't be as proud anymore. There we go. The thin strip bait, look at all the scales. Thin strip bait, which I use for granter and a cob won't swim past it. Thank you. Now this week I'm going to show you on a dangle how to tie uh, what we call a little rugby ball bait with a sardine. This is not a dangle I won't be using for, for shad. Please note, if there's shad in an area or you're looking at catching shad, don't use a dingle dangle. A dingle dangle is when you're targeting pretty much everything else that will swallow the bait and at the same time swallow your hook, which will be at the top of your dangle sitting like that. Your bait will hang underneath your hook so and that's aimed at a fish that will swallow the whole thing gobble it up so your hook will be in its mouth as well the shad will not it will take a bite and it will take another bite all right got a sardine here now first what you want to get done is the body of this and then we can build on to it so i'm just going to cut the head off I'm going to cut the tail to form that little body I'm talking about. If you've got a bigger dingle, I'll actually use the sardine head to do it. These are referred to as cutlets. And nice to shape your bait. Build it up and shape it. It's a nice little mushy bait I'm making.
you first get that done. Always if you want to make the body a bit bigger to one side, you'll do it to the bottom, away from the hook. Your little stomach piece has got so much blood and stuff in. I want to put it on the inside. So that when this bait's in the water, it ciphers out bits by bits. Okay, at this stage, it's not neat at all. And then that's where the cutlets come in. You're going to start building this bait. You've got the backbone in there as well, which adds to the blood and all the flavor. As I mentioned before in some of the previous videos, the backbone's got a lot of blood in on a sardine so you want to use that to your advantage shaping that beforehand now what's nicer about dingles <laughs> which I don't think anyone really does but if you would want to you can sit and make this baits the night before at home chuck them if your freezer is big enough, chuck them either in a plastic bag or in your bait box in the freezer. Bit of a fin. And make yourself 10 or 5 or even a starter bait, just your first one. And you'll be shaping this with your hand all the time until you've got the shape you want. Little rugby ball bait on a deagle dangle. Your hook, a lot of blood, yeah, will go through the top. And your sinker will hook up there for the casting with your cast clip. And no cobble swim past this. This is a lovely Blu-ray or small skate bait. Um, brown skates, anything like that will eat it. And uh, uh, rock hard, any of those fish that like these meaty baits will not swim past this bait. Nice little ball bait. And like I said, you use those cutlets over and over and you can build this nice and shape it the way you want. And thank you again for joining us this week. We thank you for your support. Make sure you subscribe to get all the notifications. And I hope these baits get your results out.